Welcome back to the Center for Stingray Biology. I showed you in uh, the early episodes an intro to what happened the other day. We had three batches of pups born. We already caught batch number one, which was only one pup. Then we had another batch of six. Now we're up to this batch, which is also a batch of six. So, I was anticipating this batch and I already made some room. I moved some pups around to make space in the basket. So now I'm just gonna start catching them and showing you these rays that were born today. Oh, not today. Well, yes, born today, sorry. Um, and then I'm gonna talk a little bit about the breeding of these pups. Okay, because uh, across the last few batches has been some very interesting things that um, I was trying to figure out myself as well like what the reasoning behind it was. If it's a glare, let me know, then we'll just move out to another spot. I'll just put it in the bucket right here so that everyone can see it. Oh, I didn't check the six. I forgot. <laughs> and this one is a male. It's a male. Okay. Now I have to catch over here the problem. Can you guys, is it too dark? Can you see? Because that back door is over there and there's no space for me to catch these guys. So I have to do it from here. I'll just sex it. This one's a female. There we go. One male, one female. This one is a male. So, what is it, two males and a female now? Yeah. Come on, guys. Come to Papa. Let me just sex them and I'll put it in the basket. Oops. Female, female, male. And then what do we have there? Two males and one female? So yeah. it's even, three, three, right? Yeah. Okay. Three, three, here we go. Now let the water stop rippling and then you can give everyone a nice look at the pup. Good? Mm -hmm. Alright, I'm gonna put them into this basket right here. You can stay right there. I'm gonna support them right in here. There they go. Alright, so now that they're in, 
um, like I said, I wanted to talk a little bit about the breeding of these fish because the outcome of what I'm getting from the pups is not exactly what I was expecting. And I'll explain to you what I mean. See, these rays, come show, show them what. They're black rays, right? They are P14 hybrids. I want, I want everyone to get a, a, a better look at them. Okay, and uh, if you look up what a P14 is supposed to look like, it's black with small white spots. In every sense of the way, to me, this is like a very high quality P14, especially when um, they were younger, they were really, really phenomenal fish, That, which is why I chose to grow these out for breeding, right? But the pups that I'm getting now is not what I'm expecting. The pups, some of them, okay, well, first of all, they're all born brownish, okay? So if you guys are familiar with P14s or you guys can look it up, when P14s are born, they're not like black diamonds. They don't come out black or light gray or whatever. They're brown. They're brown with like a tortoise shell pattern and markings, right? And as they grow, they, they change from that juvenile pattern to an adult coloration, which becomes like a light gray to a black. And then the, um, how can I explain it? Uh, then you start to see like a white spot form and coming out. And, and then they transform into this, right? But let me show you the babies now. They look nothing like what I expect. And I've been growing them for a while now. Um, oh, hey, oh, pass me that light, turn it on. Okay. Here we go, give me one second here. So this is some of the earlier batches, right? And I'm confused because I'm watching them grow and I'm thinking maybe it's because of the juvenile pattern. See these younger ones? These are the ones I just put in. These smaller ones, right? They're not showing spots yet, but kind of like rings. So those are juveniles. But as they grow, you see the white spot. I have, oh, I hold the light for me so I can point out to people. Okay, so like you see that one right there. Those are rings, right? Those are newborn patterns. And then you got this is from the previous batch. Previous batch. And as they, they, they used to look like these. But now... They're starting to get the white center, just as I explained, and they're starting to turn grayish. Now, granted, they're still young, and they still have a lot of growing to do. I don't see them going in the direction of how the parents looked when they were younger. So that's what was bothering me, and and some of them are brown, like like the one up on the wall there. Now, let me get up here. I got, I got this one. Um, actually, I'm going to show them up here also, but I think they can see. Yeah, why don't you hold that? Let me pull the ladder over so I can go up and show the one batch even uh, before that one. The previous batch before that one, which they're older, okay? And, I mean, I've been patiently waiting, watching them grow, seeing how they develop because, as I understand, the P14s are born with that juvenile pattern and they need time to grow out of it for me to see what their true beauty and potential is going to be, right? And uh, let me show you one batch earlier. So now you see here, that one has turned gray and going towards the black direction. But these guys are still brownish, right? And different spots. Now that one right there is going in the black direction. These look like to me going, they're kind of in between brown and gray right now. I don't know whether it will get grayer and, and more black as we go. That one looks brown, you know, or light brown. So does that one. But nonetheless, they do have really beautiful spotting. And the one underneath there, very weird pattern with white coming through now. Now, all of these guys had that young uh, tortoise shell pattern, like what I showed you with the newborns. So I'm just waiting to see how these guys develop. I'm hoping for them to turn into some beautiful black ray with a ton of spots throughout the whole body covered. You know, they call them galaxies for a reason because they look like the sky. You know, there's tons and tons of stars, you know, and spots throughout the whole fish. So that's the result that I was going for, but I don't know if it's getting there yet. And that's what has me concerned. Now, hey, right, take this while I come down. There's one more batch I want to show you, all right? And that's a batch that's out here. Here, give me. So I got this batch right here. Um, and these were the ones that I moved out not too long ago. Uh, let's see, this one's up against the wall. 
see they're kind of black kind of brown um that one right there is turning i think it's gonna be nice right let's see that one right there it's it's going in the direction that it should be going and the other ones it's going in a weird direction now this one's black and it's got rings okay so where is the hang up in all this okay before I moved them into these tanks I had them in one of the fiberglass ponds and the problem was back then I had other rays here I had some Motoro rays these guys down here there was a Motoro male that was in there also Okay, sorry. there was a male Motoro male in there also so now there's a phenomenon um, known in the reptile industry and that is when uh, reptiles mate um, I, I don't know this for I, I mean I know it's a fact but I don't know does it occur in all or only some reptiles but the females can store the sperm for later use okay now given that these things are coming out brown I started thinking maybe the Matoro male mated these females before okay because and that's what I thought and I said okay now I don't want that combination I want them to be you know black on black pure so I separate them I move them here I move I put the Matoros into this tank and then I put the P14 hybrids in this tank but then subsequent batches that kept coming out were coming out brown now then that that, that kind of led me to believe you know could it be possible that stingrays can do the same thing store sperm because it's not the first time I heard of it you know Richard Ross has mentioned it and a couple of other people have mentioned it as well but I've never actually been able to prove it okay um, but given the results of the babies that I'm getting here it's kind of looking that way now the question is how long do they store the sperm for because I think this is now my third batch coming from these guys and they're still kind of on that brownish side and again like I said I don't know if I'm confused whether it's the p14 juvenile pattern that's making it brown or it's the the sperm storing phenomenon that is continually making the Matoro cross now all I can do is just continually breed them but here's the strange thing every time they do uh, remate again because I've shown you many times before that I find sperm in the tank again but is it the new sperm doesn't take because the old sperm is there I have no clue and this is a learning process for me and I just wanted to share that with you you know because this is you know just something really interesting and uh, I myself would like to know and maybe even possibly prove that they do or don't store sperm but anyways that's what's going on here and I just wanted to give you guys an update on that and show you actually what is going on uh, my phone is acting up sorry about that guys the phone keeps acting up and that always happens when I'm recording and phone calls are start coming in but anyways we're gonna call it the end right here and whenever I have something interesting or something I think that can educate the stingray hobby I will be more than glad to share it with you guys so thank you guys for all your support thank you for watching please like share and subscribe and I will see you in the next video take care